Number 16. From its position in the periodic table, determine which atom in each pair is more electronegative. And then we have A through G. So we did a very similar problem like this in number 15. So if you want the overall rundown, go back to that one first if you haven't already. But if you have, we'll just continue here. This one will kind of be like a quick inversion than the last question. All right, so just remember what being electronegative is. So electronegativity or being an atom is being electronegative. This is just talking about whether an atom can pull electrons closer to itself or not. So it's the atom's ability to attract, we'll say, because that's what it is. It's all about an attraction. So it's an atom's ability to attract electrons to itself. And the, the rule is, is that if, if you have a higher electronegativity, that means that you're more able to attract electrons. All right. So in this little example that I'm going to draw over here, we have two atoms, one yellow and one blue. And they always form an attraction with electrons, never protons, never neutrons. So just know that within their space, they will be attracted with bonding of electrons, either sharing or transfer of electrons, depending if it's covalent or ionic. But if one atom is more electronegative, let's just say that this one is a higher electronegativity and this one has a lower electronegativity, this atom, the yellow one, will have electrons more close to that atom than the other atom. So the higher the um, electronegativity an atom has, the more greedy it will get, basically, and it will pull, it will attract the electrons closer to itself. If they had basically the same number of electronegativity, right, if their electronegativities were the same, the electrons would then be shared 50-50. And that's what a nonpolar covalent bond is, and that's what nonpolar covalent compounds are. Okay. So... Let's get started. We have for A, nitrogen or phosphorus. Which one would be more electronegative? Well, we gotta know the trend. It's the same as the ionization energy trend. So as you go from left to right across a period, your electronegativity and your ionization energy, if you guys remember that, your electronegativity will increase, all right? So fluorine is actually the the atom that has the highest electronegativity, so it will want to attract electrons all over the place. Keep in mind that your noble gases will not have the highest electronegativity because these are inert, and they don't really react with much. So basically it stops here. So fluorine is actually the most electronegative element, not neon. Now as you go down a group, just remember that your electronegativity, just like your ionization energy, would decrease, all right? So it would drop down. So that means that, you know, nitrogen would have a higher electronegativity than bismuth. So when nitrogen attracts electrons in a bond, it would pull it more than bismuth would in the same type of bond, all right? So between nitrogen and phosphorus, which one would be more electronegative? Well, as you go down a group, electronegativity decreases. So which one would be more out of the two? It would be nitrogen. So nitrogen would win here. So that means that nitrogen would be able to pull electrons or attract electrons more towards itself than phosphorus would in a bond. B, nitrogen or germanium? Well, nitrogen's still here. And germanium is over here. Hmm. Which one? Let's see. As we go across, electronegativity will increase. So nitrogen's got a little bit up on that. But as you go down, electronegativity decreases. So which one do you think has the greater electronegativity? It would still be nitrogen. So nitrogen still wins here. All because you had to go down and electronegativity decreases to get there. Okay, so these two are done. C, sulfur or fluorine? Well, sulfur's here, 
fluorine is here. Let me do that in a different color. Sulfur is here, and fluorine is here. Let's see. Electronegativity increases from left to right, so fluorine's got the upper edge on that, and electronegativity decreases as you go from top to bottom. So which one would have more? Fluorine would. Fluorine is the most electronegative element, so if you see anything with fluorine, fluorine's always going to win as far as being more electronegative. D. Chlorine or sulfur. Chlorine is over here. Sulfur is right next door, to the left. As you go from left to right, electronegativity increases, so it would make sense that chlorine would be the more electronegative element. It would pull electrons, it would attract electrons more than sulfur would. E. H or C. Hydrogen or carbon. Hydrogen's all the way over here. Carbon's over here. As you go from left to right, electronegativity will increase. So since hydrogen's here and carbon's over here and you had to go all the way, that means that carbon would be more electronegative. So that would be a circle on carbon. Okay, so E's done. And now moving on to F. Selenium or phosphorus. Selenium is number 34 over here. Phosphorus is up top here. Hmm. This one's tricky. Phosphorus to selenium, right? So as you go across, you increase. That's what we had to do. But then as you go from top to bottom, you decrease. So which one would it be? Would it be phosphorus or would it be selenium? It turns out that the increase as you go from left to right are much greater numbers than if you dropped down. So... By saying that, the decrease would be much less than the increase. So it actually would be selenium, because as you go across the period, you actually increase more. Your electronegativity gets much, much greater as opposed to that drop when you decrease. So it would actually be selenium. And that would check that one out. And then last but not least, we have G, carbon or silicon. Carbon is up top here. Let me just put it into a different color. Carbon's over here. Silicon is over here. As you go down, electronegativity decreases. So that means that carbon up top would have more electronegativity. So that would be that guy. All right? And that one's done. Number 16 is done. So this one is just knowing your trend and just being able to pick out which atom is more electronegative than the other one. All right? So definitely understand what electronegativity is in general, know how to pick out which one is more or less electronegative, and yeah, and from that we will be able to determine nonpolar covalent bonds, polar covalent bonds, polar or nonpolar compounds, ionic bonds, et cetera, et cetera, all right? So this is really gearing you up for the rest of this chapter. So hopefully you guys have this down. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know in the comments what you thought, if you wouldn't mind, and if you want to, you can click subscribe, help out the community a little bit. And I thank you for that. I'll see you guys all in the next question. Bye-bye.